Shalom, we're starting with the counting of the Omer tonight for day six. Baruchata Yehua Eloheinu Melech Olam, Atsher Kitshanu B'mitzvotah V'tzivanu Al Sefirat HaOmer Hayom Yom Seish. Blessed are you, Yehua Lua, King of the Universe, who has commanded us to count the Omer on this day, day six. Shalom, beloveds of the King. Here we are again today, praise Abba Yahuwah, on the sixth day of the counting of the Omer, as we continue reading the book of Jeremiah, and that which the Father is doing in this hour, as it is so profound. As the more we read through these chapters, the more we understand that this is facing us in the face right now of what is before us. And... There's certain things that just keep coming up and keep coming up, which is so profound, and we will read again one of those things in this chapter tonight. So let us start reading chapter 8. And at that time, declares Yehuam, they shall bring the bones of the sovereigns of Yehuda, and the bones of its heads, and the bones of the priests, and the bones of the prophets, and the bones of the inhabitants of Jerusalem out of their burial sites. And shall spread them before the sun and the moon and all the host of the heavens, which they have loved and which they have served and after which they have walked, which they have sought and to which they have bowed themselves. They shall be gathered, nor they shall not be gathered nor buried before dung in the face of the earth. Now that is even what we see in this country where a lot of the African people in this country, they worship their ancestors and they bring the bones of the ancestors and they throw the bones and they do all these things, all these rituals. So you see, where does that come from? There's nothing new under the sun. This was already being done in this time of the book of Jeremiah, calling up the bones, the same as um, Saul. He went and tried and wanted to call up the spirit of um, of of Samuel in order to speak, and so going to consult a medium, you understand, and so nothing has changed. People are consulting mediums. People are consulting because when the spirit of Yahuwah is going to be removed from among the people, what are they going to do when His presence is no longer there? And so it says. And death shall be preferred to life by all the rest of those who remained of who remain of this evil people, who remain in all the places where I have driven them, declares Yahuwah of hosts. So you see, this is even spoken of in the book of Revelation, where they will want to cry out for death, but they will not be able to die. And you shall say to them, Thus said Yahuwah. Would they fall and not rise? Does one turn away and not return? Why then has this people, Jerusalem, turned away in a continual backsliding? They are strengthened in deceit. They refuse to turn back. Do you see what is the, the when we look and we see there's a pattern. He keeps telling you that we are backslidden, that we are backsliding, that we are not serving Abba Yahuwah fervently the way that we should, that we do not seek him the way that we should, that we have this blasé type of a relationship with him. We, you know, he's like my, my friend. I don't fear him. I don't serve him. I don't fear him that he will judge me because all I've been told is that he's a yah of love and he just wants to love me and he's not going to judge me. And yet at the end of the day, we see that this is speaking about his own chosen people. And you shall say to them, thus said Yahuwah, would they fall and not rise? Does one turn away and not return? Why then has this people, Jerusalem, turned away in continual backsliding? They are strengthened in deceit. They refuse to turn back. So you see, they're not willing to repent and turn back to the Father. I have listened and heard. They do not speak right. No man has repented of his evil, saying, What have I done? They all turned to their own course like a horse rushing into battle. 
Now, is this not exactly where we are today? Where people just want to be able to demand and command of the Father. Things go wrong in their lives and they blame the devil back, backwards and forwards. It's always the devil that is doing something. Never wanting to come to a place of repenting or never wanting to come to a place of asking the Father, Father, could I maybe have opened the door in my life? What is it that you're trying to do? What is it that you're trying to show me in my life? That maybe there is something that I might be doing that I need to repent of because maybe I have gone astray. Even a stork in the heaven knows her appointed times and a turtle dove and a swallow and a thrush guard the time of their coming. But my people do not know the right ruling of Yahuwah. So do you see, what is it that he keeps saying? They do not want to follow right ruling. They want to follow their own stubborn course. They want to go their own way. They do not want to seek Abba Yahuwah. They do not want to seek Abba Yahuwah's ways. What was the word that he gave us? And this is why this word is so profound. If we go to Isaiah, this was the word that he gave us as we passed over at the Passover, as we were about to go into the Passover. What was the prophetic word that the Father gave us that had to be declared? Isaiah 30. And what does he say in Isaiah 30 verses 1 and 2? Woe to the stubborn children, declares Yahuwah, to make counsel but not from me, to devise plans but not from my spirit in order to add sin to sin. So you see, we devise plans but not of the Father. We go our way but we do not not seek him, who are setting out to go down to Mitzrayim and have not asked my mouth. So we turn back to the world and to the ways of the world to be strengthened in the strength of Pharaoh and to seek refuge in the shadow of Mitzrayim. So is this not where we are today? And then we understand why the father says there's going to be judgment because you are turning to your own ways, you are turning to your own resources, you turn to the things of the world, you turn to your religious systems to be able to help you, but you do not turn to find out from the Father what is pleasing to Him. And so you see when I say to you there is this, this, this word is exactly, and this was Isaiah, this is Isaiah the prophet, and now this is Jeremiah the prophet. So you see, the prophets will be speaking the same words. Different prophets, but the message doesn't change. How do you say we are wise, and the Torah of Yahuwah is with us? But look, the false pen of the scribe has worked falsehood. So do you see, even though you might have the Torah, even though you might have the word of Yahuwah, but what has happened? You have the false pen of the scribe has worked falsehood. So now we write all these books and we put all these messages together, but it's all falsehood. It doesn't come back to the truth of Yahuwah's word. So now we will read books and books and books and books, but the very Bible that we're supposed to read, we do not read. We want to gather more and more and more information that takes us further and further at times away from the Father. Yet, to read the scriptures and to truly understand the Father's heart, we do not do. Because it's better to read a book that is going to tickle the ears. And so that's why he says that, but look, the false pen of the scribe has worked falsehood. Because even though these people had the Torah, what were they doing? They had gone, they were going, they were writing, the scribes were already writing letters that was coming from the, the sages that were giving them all these extra words that they're listening to, all these extra teachings that they're given that is not even scriptural and where they even get it from. Telling you that Eve went and fell pregnant with the seed of the serpent and that's where Cain came from. Where do they get that from the Bible? But now we listen to these teachings of the rabbis and we make them become scriptural like it's in the Bible. The wise shall put to shame. They shall be broken down and caught. See, they have rejected the word of Yahuwah. So what wisdom do they have? You see, we want to acquire all this wisdom from all these writings instead of requiring or obtaining the wisdom that comes directly from Abba Yahuwah's word when we spend time with him that he will open up the word to us. Therefore, I give their wives to others and their fields to possess to possessing ones, for from the least even to the greatest, they are all greedy for gain. From the prophet to the priest, all act 
falsely. So you see, why do they bring all these nice prophetic words? Why do they bring all these nice prophetic words that 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 tickles our ears? Why do these teachers bring nice words that tickle our, our ears? Because they're trying to gain more following on YouTube. Because they're trying to gain more following on their, on their channel that is to be able to give them the money that they then ask you to be able to give into their ministry and they bring you all these nice prophetic words and people keep wanting to listen to these prophetic words because at the end of the day it is what the people want to hear. The father will hand the people over to the people that they want to hear. So if you want to hear a nice soft message that's going to tell you peace, peace when there is none, he will hand you over to those kind of people. And it says, they're greedy for gain. So they speak, they teach, and they prophesy what is pleasing to the people because they, at the end of the day, are doing it for gain. Do they really do it to please the Father? Because if they were really listening to the Father, the message would be a little bit different, and then the people might not want to come. It's the seeker-friendly church. That's what it is. Therefore, it says, from the prophet to the priest, all act falsely. And throughout how many of these chapters, it's all it is. They act falsely. And they yield the breach of the daughter of my people slightly saying, peace, peace when there is no peace. So you see, they're trying to appease you to say, no, 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 don't worry. There's no destruction going to come. Don't worry. There's not anything that's difficult that's going to happen to you. It's all going to be peaceful because the father is a father of, of, of love and it's going to be peaceful and you can behave as you want. And continue to go your own way. Nothing's going to befall you. And it just appeases you for a little while. Were they ashamed when they had done abominations? No, they were not at all ashamed. Nor did they know how to blush. So they shall fall among those who fall. They shall stumble in the time of their visitation, said Yahuwah. So you see... They shall stumble because the Father is going to visit the iniquity upon the land. And if we have not repented of the things that are there, we will be amongst those that are going to be able to fall into the destruction. I shall snatch them away, declares Yahuwah. There are no grapes on the vine, no figs on the fig tree, and the leaf has faded, and what I give them shall pass away from them. So you see, he's looking for the fruit. We are to bear the fruit. We are to bear the fruit of repentance. We are to bear the fruit. If we say that we forgive someone, we need to walk in the forgiveness that we've forgiven that person, not keep coming up against that person because it, then that means you have not forgiven. So at the end of the day, we are to walk in the repentance that is there. We are to make sure that our hearts are right before the Father. So if we say that we have forgiven, then that means we have to walk in that forgiveness to be able to bless that person, to be able to speak life over that person. And so we continue to read and it says, And so he's looking for fruit. Why are you sitting, verse 14, why are you sitting still? Gather yourselves and let us go into the walled cities and let us be silent there. For Yahuwah our Lua has let us perish and given us poisoned water to drink because we have sinned against Yahuwah. Wow. Now that speaks volumes in the hour that we are in, especially with the latest revelation that has come out that our water is being poisoned with snake venom. So what is the Father saying? Those who are not going to turn to him, those who are not seeking him, those who are not walking with him, those who have not bowed their knee to him, what is the protection that they're going to have from the water that is being poisoned at the, po at the moment with snake venom. And this is the snake venom that they put in the water that is brought about this very pandemic. And so what are people doing? Still worrying about the things of this world? Still building themselves a kingdom on this earth? We better be preparing for what is to come. 
because these things, beloveds of the king, are on our doorstep. And Yah the Father is saying himself, For Yahuwah our Lord has let us perish and given us poisoned water to drink because we have sinned against him. So why has he allowed this? Because people need to repent and turn back to him. <coughs> we looked for peace, but there was no good, and for a time of healing, but see, fear. The snorting of his horses was heard from Dan. All the land shook at the sound of the neighing of the strong ones. They came and devoured the land and all that fills it, the city and those who dwell in it. So you see the snorting of the horses. Which horses? The horses that are going to run. The horses that are going to run in the book of Revelation chapter 6. The white horse, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, the horse that is going to devour land and it's going to be able to make those fall under those plagues and over the because of the war and every and the scarcity of food and the famine and everything else that is coming in Revelation chapter 6. For look, I am sending among you serpents, adders, which have no which have no enchanter, and they shall bite you, declares Yahuwah. So you see, is this not the scorpions that are going to come? The serpent seed, the serpent seed that is coming to bite his people with the deception, because what is the serpents that come? The serpents that come are the ones that, they are the enchanters. These are the the, the ones that are going to be able to come and bring this, the, the venom of the serpent. And this is going to bring the great deception upon the people where there's a great delusion. And he, this is the father speaking. And he says, I am sending among you serpents, adders. So you see, this is the serpent seed. This is the very thing of the pharmacia that is out there, that everybody's turning to the snake venom that is being put in, in this injection that's being given to the people, this very V thing that the people are bowing down to, and what is coming upon the people. They are being bitten by the serpent seed and they are having all these these um, nanobots and these things being put in their bodies. When in grief I would seek comfort, my heart is sick within me. Observe the voice, the cry of the daughter of my people from a distant land. Is Yahuwah not in Zion? Is her sovereign not in her? Why have they provoked me with their carved images and with foreign worthlessnesses so you see we turn to the things of this world that is worthless in the end instead of us being able to turn to the creator of the universe to Abba Yahuwah himself who is the only one who can bring us life who can bring us life in abundance who is the one who's going to help us yet you will see these people still queuing up to take a thing. and at the end of the day they do not fear putting this thing into their body, putting their trust and their faith in the systems of this world, believing the merchants of this world, those that are lying and deceiving, and yet they are being bitten by the serpent. The harvest is past, the summer is ended, and we have not, say, we have not been saved. For the breach of the daughter of my people, I have been broken. I have grown sad astonishment has taken hold of me. So you see, how long do you think that the Father can continue to allow the destruction that is upon the earth, the continuation of the abortion, the continuation of the murder, the continuation of the sacrifices, the continuation of people pointing their finger in his face? How long do you think Father is going to continue to put up with man and his evil ways. Just like he said, all their thoughts were wicked continually. 
This is exactly what happened in the time of Noah. And as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man, which means it's going to be exactly the same time. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no healer there? Why has the healing of the daughter of my people not come? And so Jeremiah is still crying out for the people to see that they will repent, to see that they will fear Abba Yahuwah, not listen to these false prophets, bow their knee, repent, and allow Father not to have to send them into exile. Because if they would have repented, and if they would have turned from their wicked way, then he would not, he would have relented, and he would not have sent them into exile. But because they did not repent, they did go into exile. And so the Father is still beckoning us right now. And the Father is still crying out to us right now, telling us, beckoning us to repent and turn from our wicked ways. And if we do not repent and turn from our wicked ways, what is going to befall us? Nothing but destruction. May Abba bless you all. Shalom, shalom.